So I thought I would take you along with me today to, I'm, I'm trying to be quiet because I'm in the ladies' locker room at my gym, um, but I wanted to show you what a day in my life looks like when I am not in a controlling, abusive marriage because I was, and I didn't know that it could be this way. So I'm guessing that if you're in that situation and you don't know, just like I didn't know what it could feel like to be in a healthy relationship where you're not answering to anyone, you're not second guessed, you're not walking on eggshells, you're not um, doubting your reality, you're making your own choices, your own decisions without anyone being able to veto them or tell you that you're wrong or um, question you. So come along with me and let's see what that looks like. My gym gives you free coffees. How great is that? But you just have to buy this this lid. Okay, so just the fact that I bought, thank you, that I bought this lid for $27 without having to ask anyone's permission, without having to hide it, <laughs> without having to have a whole argument about how this is a great value because now I can get free coffee all winter. Um, yeah, no, I get to make that decision because I am a grown-up, I'm an adult, and I earn my own money and I should be able to buy what I think is necessary, all right? So that wasn't the way, that wasn't the way when I was in an, um, an abusive marriage. I still earned my, I still earned money, but I wasn't allowed to make one decision that would have been squashed. That would have been wrong. That would have been ridiculous, selfish, um, unimaginable for me to make a $27 purchase, which was going to end up saving me lots of money if I were to buy coffee. But then again, I wouldn't have been allowed to buy coffee either. Allowed, yes, I said allowed. This is what it feels like. If the repercussions are so severe to do something as buy a simple cup of coffee, that it just wasn't worth it. And let's just talk about the idea that I joined a gym. That would have been unimaginable. That would never have been allowed because I, I didn't deserve it or that would have been selfish. Now, believe me, it wasn't the, it was a double standard. I couldn't have done something that I wanted to do, but believe me, the controlling narcissistic spouse could do whatever he wanted to do, which included taking expensive vacations, buying whatever he felt like, whenever he felt like it. Um, and remember, I earned the money. So I know that you all are out there in the same situation. So I just, and I didn't realize how ridiculously absurd it was because it was my normal, it was my reality. And um, I didn't see inside other people's marriages. So I didn't know that mine was so completely <laughs> absurd. But I want to let you in and show you what a normal marriage can look like. Because yeah, I'm remarried. My husband and I are both adults. He does not question uh, my purchases. I'm, I'm responsible for my own finances. I'm responsible for my own time. The fact that I got up and went to the gym today without any conversation about it, without any argument, without any wondering what he might need from me, wondering if, if this is going to cause a problem, he's a, a rational person. If he had, if there was some reason that he needed me, thank you. I know, I know, thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, if he has a, uh, good reason for needing me to do something other than go to the gym, we would simply have a conversation around it. We would come to an agreement about how we could both get our needs met, how we could both have what we want um, happen by compromising. You know, that is what a healthy marriage looks like. All right, more later. Okay, so I'm calling an audible on my plans. Um, so of course, my husband knows that I went to the gym because he just saw me in my gym clothes leaving the house at the time I usually go. There's no need for further conversation about it, but I just broke a nail. And so I'm gonna go to the nail salon and have a manicure. Do I have to check in with him? Do I have to alert him? No, because I'm an adult and I can do that. If 
that something comes up, he can reach me, right? There is no walking on eggshells. And I say this because I, I hear it every day from my clients, how they can't make the simplest decision without it becoming World War III. Um, for instance, just getting on a call with me, they have to move mountains to make that happen. They have to make up stories about how they have to, uh, you know, go run an errand and then they, they have to ha actually have evidence that that errand was run and it's exhausting for them just to try to get help, just to try to have a phone call with me. They're hiding their cars, shaking with fear because they're not allowed to even have a phone conversation that's that's not documented, that's not um, okayed. Um, this is not normal. This is not normal behavior. So again, I just want you to know what a normal life looks like. And I, you can have it. It's right there for you. But let's uh, come with me to the nail salon. That's done. Nails done. Uh, that took an hour. I did not get one call. I did not get one text. I did not get any thing wondering where I was, what I was doing, why I wasn't home yet. This is normal. What you're going through, if you're constantly harassed and questioned about your whereabouts, that is not normal or healthy. I got some work done and now I have to run to the grocery store. So come along with me. We're in the grocery store. I want to tell you a story about what it was like when I used to have to go to the grocery store when I was married to my controlling and toxic narcissistic spouse. Uh, it was an anxiety riddled event. Um, so in order for me to go, and remember we have three small children, in order for me to go to the grocery store, I would have to present him with a list of groceries that we needed and a dollar amount next to each one with the total of exactly what I needed, exactly, to, you know, what the exact amount would be for me to go to the grocery store. Now, I've got three small children, uh, a, a career, <laughs> I'm earning the money or at the time I thought I wasn't earning as much as he was but it turns out I was earning all of it um, and I'm telling you this because I want you to know that you are not alone if that is you if you're in a situation like this where you're controlled I'm putting myself out there so that you know you're not alone and it doesn't just happen to me it didn't just happen to you it happens to people all over the place every day. I talk to people every day who are in similar situations where they have no voice, they have no say, because the repercussions of standing up to the bully are just not worth it. It's just, you're trying to keep the peace, you're trying to keep your family running, you're trying to, in my case, raise three children, deal with um, a, a spouse that's unraveling right in front of my eyes, um, and and keep a job. <laughs> so it's a lot, you just, you have to pick and choose, right? You have to choose your battles. So that's what it looked like for me to go to the grocery store. Then, <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but I'm holding a mirror up. So in case you recognize any of these things, you can say, oh, okay, right? It's not just me. Um, then I would have to present him with the list and he would systematically cross off whatever he thought we didn't need. If it was something he didn't like or he thought it was unnecessary or whatever only what he, he thought it was the control right the control and then recalculate a new total and give me that exact amount all right so now I go to the grocery store three kids in tow because you know it was never on his agenda to babysit as he called it our children so uh, I would take them all to the grocery store and guess what? You know how kids are. They wanted everything they see. They're throwing things in the basket and I had to say no, 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 take things out. It was so, there was so much anxiety around this. And then I would see something and go, oh snap, 
I need that and I forgot it. I forgot to put it on the list, but that's something I really need. Like so-and-so needs to take this to school tomorrow or, or this is uh, missing from what I'm cooking for dinner tonight or whatever. And now I have to recalculate. I have to, if in order to get that thing, I have to take something else off the list. And I have to recalculate and figure out and do all this math in my head and just see, is that, um, is that gonna leave me enough money? What do I have to take off? And this would happen constantly. And if one of the kids really, really, really wanted something and my heart would break for them and I would get it, same thing. Recalculate, recalculate, recalculate. So I'm trying to maneuver through a grocery store with three kids, you know, I had three kids in three and a half years. So, I, you know, they could have been two, three, two, four, and five at the time and throwing things in the cart and having to take it out and having to keep an eye on them and trying to keep them from running off and trying to keep them from fighting and trying to keep my head in the game where I'm, I'm, I've got the calculations right and remember everything on my list. It, it was just nerve wracking. Then I would go to the grocery, to the uh, checkout and be a nervous wreck because I'm scared I'm not going to have enough money. I'm scared I've not calculated, right? And I have nothing, nothing to back it up. Not a card, not anything. It's like, I've got that amount of cash and that's it. It was, <laughs> that's how they keep you in this place. But they just put so much on you to make everything so difficult that you can't function. Um, yeah, so that was what grocery store shopping looked like for me back then. Do you recognize anything in that story? Is that similar to anything you're going through? Because it's not normal. It's not okay. And you know, people will go, oh, why, why don't you just say no? Why don't you just this? Why don't you just that? Well, if they've never been in a relationship with a narcissistic person, then they can't understand why you don't just. It's not worth it most of the time. You just, you're trying to stay alive. You're just trying to keep your family together. You're just trying to get through the day and fighting over, it, it, you'd be fighting all day long because everything is, is about control. Everything is a battle. All right, so that is what grocery shopping looked like for me then. Now, I'm an adult. I make the decisions. I get what I, what I think we should. Uh, my husband doesn't question anything I get. It's mutual respect. Um, we treat each other like equals. No one person gets the say over anything the other one wants to do. Um, that is a healthy relationship. You know, we, we count on each other. We respect each other. We, um, we trust each other to do um, what's best for our family and uh, what we think we need at that time. Okay, so I'm gonna do my shopping and I'll see you in a bit. I'm back home, back in the office. Um, I hope that helped. I really wanted you to see what my life looks like now and explain to you what it looked like before so that you can maybe see the similarities in your own life and that you don't have to put up with this. It seems like you do. And I get that more than anyone else. I thought I had to, too. I did not see a way out for a very long time. I didn't see any way of creating any boundaries or ever leaving this toxic situation. But I did, and you can too. And you can go on and lead a very happy, normal, drama-free life like I'm doing. So I hope that my being vulnerable like this and really exposing myself has helped you understand the similarities between us and um, that, that there are many, 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 many people like you out there. Wonderful, intelligent, smart, creative people like you who get themselves into a situation like this because you're targeted, because of those wonderful qualities about you. You're willing to do the work. You're willing to take on responsibility. You're willing to, to do the heavy lifting. You're, you're willing to do so much um, that you're taken advantage of by a controlling, toxic, narcissistic person. But you don't have to stay in that horrible situation. If that's you, oh, there's the puppy. <laughs> 
If that's you, I hope you'll reach out. You can book a call with me. There will be a link in the description. You can get right on my calendar and we'll figure out what you need. Did you find this video helpful? I sure hope you did. If you liked it, will you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I've linked a couple of other videos here that I think you might also like. So I hope I see you in the next video.